Renee Rapp, queen of everything, queen of my life, queen of 2024. I adore her. The second she starts singing, I am Regina George, I died. She was fantastic. Her presence, like as the HBIC, go look that up because I'm not going to swear in this video, but that's who she is. And I completely fell in love with her. Hey everyone, welcome back to Canon Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX, and Dave reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing Mean Girls 2024, the musical. Okay, just so everyone knows, it is a musical. There's a musical note in the title card on the poster, and in the movie, it's a musical. Okay? And guys, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. We do. Here we go. I had to do it. Mean Girls has been such a massive part of my adolescence, my teenage years. And I think that Tina Fey had absolutely no idea that it would become a cultural phenomenon. I don't think the cast even thought of that. I know like Lindsay Lohan was a little superstar and obviously we loved Lilo and my whole generation looks up to her and like Paris Hilton and Britney Spears, like they were the trio in the early 2000s. But Lilo was just my childhood. So it was really great to see her in something like Mean Girls. And then we had the lovely introduction of Rachel McAdams, who is a Canadian girly. I went to the same school as her. That's all we can say from that school. But yeah, we went to the same school as her. And I just really loved Rachel McAdams. Amanda Seyfried went on to have an amazing career as well. Uh, she was fantastic as Karen. And Lacey Chabert has been doing really well for herself. I love the entire cast, even like Lizzie Kaplan as Janice. Like, Everyone was perfection. And we had the best Aaron Samuels. We did. We had the best Aaron Samuels. And I'll get into that later. But I think the reason why I just adore Mean Girls 20, 2004, it's been a decade now. In 2024, we have a new Mean Girls. It's crazy. Brand new cast for a brand new generation. And I love that as well. I just think that they really understood girl world and Tina Fey really just broke it down for everyone because you can find a piece of yourself anywhere in those cliques uh, at that cafeteria when they actually break it down at the beginning of it. You could be a jock theater kid. Theater kid here, just in case you didn't know. So everyone can resonate with someone in the cast. And I think that's what's really special here. Not being in high school and just navigating the real world, you kind of see like this social hierarchy, which is so sad. And the one thing that you learn from Mean Girls that Tina Fey really wanted to put in there is the community aspect of, you know, women will be really catty with each other, but it's so important to actually fight for each other. So we're going to fight with each other, but we're also going to fight for each other. And I think the more we just sit around and have conversations and understand women and be able to give other women a platform and boost each other, I think that the world would be a much better place. But of course, the teenage years are not for that. They are for arguments. They are for this petty drama that you don't really even get later on in life. And it's absolutely hilarious. And when you look back at your high school years, you're just like, did I really make a big deal out of that? The older you get, trust me, you're gonna care less about those little fights and none of it matters. But at that moment when you're 16, 17, which we see in both versions, it feels like the end of the world. So as I move into this movie musical version of Mean Girls, which is directed by Samantha Jane and Arturo Perez Jr., we get a very different version of the original film. And I understand that in 2017, we got a Broadway version of Mean Girls because Tina Fey was like, you know what? Let's do a musical because I can write lyrics to songs that can add depth to each character and really enrich the storyline, which is exactly what happened. Because in the first film, when you see Regina throwing the papers from the burn book and then everyone in that hallway just goes bananas and the animalistic side of them comes out, she really tapped into the physicality of that anger and what it means to have a hierarchy, a food chain, which is something that's always been discussed in Mean Girls because of Katie and where she comes from in Kenya. So I think that it was really smart to actually add that, those songs and that physicality to the choreography. It's really important to just connect it back to the roots of what they're trying to say with the food chain. And that's exactly what high school feels like. So those songs 
not only enrich the story, as I had mentioned, but each character, there's another layer added because of how they're feeling inside. And I really like that Gretchen got a song. I love that Karen got a song. Regina's Regina. I'll get into the glorious Renee Rapp, who's a queen and a half. Katie gets a bit more. But here's the thing with the movie musical. It's hard to translate a Broadway show into a film because a Broadway show has near 24 to 30 songs in the book and then you're condensing it to a two-hour film. So not only do you have to keep, like have dialogue as well as songs, you have to time the musical numbers, and it's not really the exact same sequences that are timed properly for a film, so you have to cut down the songs. You also have to cut down scenes or condense them or put them together. That's why the movie musical version of this felt a bit choppy, and the character relationships felt empty, especially between Regina and Katie, because they didn't have enough scenes together, which was my main peeve of the entire movie musical, because when Katie is being transformed into a plastic, we didn't get that with Regina, and that's the important part. The whole makeover, the fact that Regina sides with Katie, that, that, you know, Gretchen is breaking because she feels that Katie has become Regina's new, like, right hand, and that's why Gretchen cracks, and we didn't get any of that. And that was a major part because Regina and Katie's friendship is so important, even towards, you know, Aaron Samuels, and we got none of that. We got very few interactions between the two of them. So that's where it faltered. You needed a very, very strong relationship between the two of them to actually carry this film. And that's not what we had. It was very disjointed. And I think another issue, as much as I love them, the Janice and Damien narration for the film was weak for me because it's just stronger coming from Katie. But from a musical standpoint, I understand why they switched it to the two of them. I think Ayuli Carvalho did a fantastic job as Janice. And I think Jaquel Spivy, I hope I'm pronouncing his first name right, because he was absolutely brilliant as Damien and added so much to the character and made it his own. If anything, no offense. I really do think that he did a better job but i think that both damians gave great performances don't get me wrong in different ways i think that jaquel was able to be more flamboyant and outgoing and just sassy with it which i really loved where i think it was toned down in the original um for whatever reason i think there's different ways to play this of course but it was just more like free to be themselves even janice so that's what i liked about the two of them those are great roles to have, especially on stage, on Broadway. Didn't really translate well uh, for this narrative, unfortunately, for me personally, because I think the narration from Katie was much stronger in the film because we're, we're hearing her thoughts about the entire situation. And I think that's what was missing as well. But again, I'm saying this is what's wrong, is what I didn't like about it, but I didn't really hate it. I didn't hate the movie. I can commend them for trying something new because this movie musical also stands on its own. Even though they're paying homage and there's like line deliveries and there's a couple of surprises, of course they had to incorporate it because it is Mean Girls. And obviously Tina Fey and Tim Meadows do make an appearance with their respective roles from the original as well. I do have to mention every single person was perfectly cast. And Guri Rice is Katie was perfect. It felt like a young Lindsay Lohan and I love that. Renee Rapp, queen of everything, queen of my life, queen of 2024. I adore her. The second she starts singing, I am Regina George, I just, I died. She was fantastic. Her presence, like as the HBIC, go look that up because I'm not going to swear in this video, but that's who she is. And I completely fell in love with her. She owns that role. I just wish we had more Regina. Again, there's not enough of these characters because of the musical numbers, and the musical numbers mainly went to Janice and Damien, so we don't get enough of anyone else. That was the issue. So all Regina had in this, and unfortunately, like, Renee Rapp did the best she could with this, and it's the fact that she didn't have enough. She didn't have enough screen time, and we needed more Regina Katie time, but the rest of the plastics, we have Avantika, who was brilliant as Karen. I love her. I want to see more of her. She was fantastic. And Baby Wood as Gretchen Wieners, it literally sounded like she was Lacey Chabert. And they were fantastic. The three of them, Buzzy Phillips, 
as Mrs. George obsessed, literally obsessed with it, everyone was perfectly cast except for Aaron Samuels. I do have to say that Christopher Brittany, I'm sorry, my dude, I did not buy him as Aaron Samuels. Again, I don't know if it was like the chemistry wasn't there or there wasn't enough of him in the film or enough of him like Regina like I didn't buy the three of them I didn't buy the love triangle there I think the comparison there it was what really ruined it unfortunately uh but everyone else was spot on I love them all they all give great performances and I'll definitely watch it again it's not like I won't it's it's really fun but what's so important here is that it stands alone as a movie musical that the new generation technically doesn't have to go watch the 2004 one, and that's fine. But we have another film that young girls can watch and feel seen and understand the pressures. At first, I did hate that there was so much technology used just because it amplified everything that happened at North Shore. And I understand that social media is absolutely terrible, but it also showed the impact of Regina George, and I get that 100%. It's just, it was a bit too much, but I guess that's what happens in the Broadway musical as well. So that was my only peeve. They could have toned it down a bit, but that, uh, you know, that doesn't mean that I disliked it. I gave it a three and a half out of five. I had fun watching it. Tina Fey brought in the SNL humor that I have missed. I really hope that Others will find it funny because I was howling. And we also didn't get enough John Hamm as Coach Carr. You don't cast John Hamm as Coach Carr and then give us nothing. You don't do that. We need him. We want to see him as Coach Carr. He would have been hilarious if we got a little bit more of him. But what we did get, perfect casting, as I said. So I gave it a three and a half out of five. Please let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed the Mean Girls musical, who your favorite character is from the original Mean Girls, and if Renee Rapp did a fantastic job as Regina George. Please let me know in the comments below. I need to hear about my girl and if you guys loved her, I need to know. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And if you guys want to help me grow my wonderful channel, you can find out ways to do that in the bio below. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.